In this video, we're going to talk about the difference between cohesive and adhesive forces. Cohesive forces exist between two molecules of the same type. So let's draw two water molecules. The interaction between these two water molecules is a cohesive force. Adhesive forces, they exist between two different substances. So like water and the walls of the container, the interaction between that is an adhesive force, but the interaction between two similar water molecules is cohesive. Now oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen. What that means is that oxygen pulls the electrons toward itself. When an element is electronegative, that means it has a strong attraction for electrons. So because oxygen has a stronger pull on the electrons in that bond, it's going to acquire a partial negative charge. And hydrogen, which is electron efficient, is going to have a partial positive charge. Whenever you have a positive charge and a negative charge, a force of attraction occurs. These two are pulled towards each other. So the partially positive hydrogen atom is electrostatically attracted to the partially negative oxygen atom. And this dipole-dipole interaction has a special name. It's called a hydrogen bond. And so this is a type of uh, cohesive force that connects the water molecules together. The hydrogen bond is an intermolecular force. It's a force that's between uh, two molecules. Now, the bond between oxygen and hydrogen, this is a covalent bond or a polar covalent bond. It's polar covalent because the electrons in that bond are shared unequally. Oxygen pulls the electrons toward itself with a greater force than hydrogen. So it's polar covalent. And that's an intramolecular bond. So, but the bond between water molecules, that's all of those forces are described as cohesive forces. Now, let's say if we have a glass container. Glass is made up of silicon dioxide. So you're going to have oxygen and silicon bonds. Now, oxygen has a partial negative charge. So the oxygen atom that's in glass is attracted to the hydrogen atom that's in water because opposites attract. And the interaction between the surface of the glass and the water, that is an adhesive force because it's between two different substances. And so it makes it, that's why it's adhesive. So now let's talk about some other properties of water. So let's say if you have a waxy surface and if you put water on it, what's going to happen? Water is going to form a droplet. It's going to bead. It's going to form a spherical shape. Now, if you pour water on, let's say, a glassy surface, water is going to spread out. It's going to flatten. Why does that happen? The reason why water flattens out on glass is because the adhesive forces, the forces between the water and the glass molecule, is stronger than the cohesive forces. That's the forces that hold the water molecules together between themselves. And so when the adhesive forces exceed the cohesive forces, that's why water flattens out. Think about it. Water is polar and glass contains polar silicon oxygen bonds. So like dissolves like, that's why water adheres to glass, and so it flattens out. Now on a waxy surface, let's say like a, a surface that's coated with maybe a, a small lubricant, most waxes are nonpolar, and so they don't mix well with water. Water is polar, so when you have 
a polar substance and a non-polar substance, they don't mix. So the adhesive forces are very low here. So because the cohesive forces, that is, the forces between water molecules, exceed the adhesive forces, water is going to form a bead, and it's going to form a spherical shape. This tendency to minimize the surface area, or the contact area between the water and the waxy surface, this is called surface tension. And in this situation, the water molecules at the surface of this bulge, they experience an inward force. They're attracted to the water molecules on the interior. And so because of this inward, because of the forces on the surface are directed inward, it forms a, a spherical shape. Due to, and they call this effect surface tension. That's why water forms droplets um, in small quantities. And so it beads up. Anytime the cohesive forces exceed the adhesive forces, this is what happens. Now, let's say if we have a test tube. Well, actually, let's uh, draw two test tubes. So this test tube is going to have water, and it's going to look like this. And this one is going to be filled with mercury. So why is it that the test tube with water, it has a concave up meniscus? whereas the test tube with mercury has a concave down meniscus. Let's say this is a glass tube, by the way. So notice that water has a concave up meniscus. That means that the adhesive forces are greater than the cohesive forces. As you can see, the water is attached to the surface of the glass. It's, it adheres to the surface of the glass. The fact that it adheres to it means that it's attracted to the glass surface. And it makes sense because water is polar and the surface of the glass is also polar as well. And so the adhesive forces between water and glass are pretty strong. And so that's why you see that concave up meniscus. Now in mercury, mercury is nonpolar. And so it's not attracted to the glass or the walls of the container. And so as you can see, you have a concave down meniscus because it's repelled. It's more attracted, the mercury atoms are more attracted to themselves as opposed to the glass surface. And that's why it has this concave down meniscus. As you can see here, the mercury does not want to touch the glass. So that's why it bulges inward. And the reason for that is the cohesive forces, that is the forces between mercury, is greater than the adhesive forces. So mercury, it wants to stay attached to other mercury atoms. It doesn't want to adhere to the glass or the surface of the glass. So keep in mind, cohesive forces are those forces that exist between similar molecules. And adhesive forces, they exist between uh, different molecules or different substances. Another example of cohesive forces and adhesive forces in play is something called capillary action. So let's say if we have a container uh, that has water and if we put a small test or a small tube The action where water rises up in a small tube is called capillary action. Now, if you think about how cohesive and adhesive forces play a role in this, so water is going to form this uh, concave meniscus, especially if it's a glass tube. So, as you can see, the water here is attracted to the glass. That's due to adhesive forces. And so, due to that attraction, that can help. Um, the water molecules to be pulled up along the glass. 
and within the water you have cohesive forces where the water molecules are attracted to each other so as the water rises it's going to pull up other water molecules as well and so the combination of adhesive and cohesive forces allow water to travel up through a tiny uh, narrow tube and that's a uh, capillary action so that is it for this video so just keep in mind that cohesive forces are forces between like molecules and adhesive forces are forces between unlike molecules and they're responsible for things like surface tension cohesion you know why water forms droplets in some instances and why it flattens out in other instances it's all related to cohesive and adhesive forces so that's it for this video thanks for watching and uh, have a great day